Come on in. Hi, Scott. Hi, Kelly. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Amy. We have a really great group here tonight. We had over 150 people register and we already have over 100 in the room or almost 100 in the room. So it's gonna be a great, great evening. So Sonia, we are ready to go. All right. Hi, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I am Sonia James Gator, I'm the class of 2014. I am the chair of the Multicultural Committee for the Alumni Association Board. Uh, this committee is brand new. This is our first event. I'm hoping that we have many, many, many more, which we will. Um, we want to start really highlighting and celebrating all of our multicultural alumni, our students, our student orgs. And, we, and by doing these kind of events, holding these discussions, holding more interactive and fun events, that's how we're gonna do it. And it will also help the, cli the climate that Stetson has seen as not so good over the years because we'll start having some really honest conversations with one another. So I wanna welcome you and and thank you so much for being here with us this evening. We're going to start the event with a short video on the history and legacy and celebration of African American Greek letter organizations. So Renee, why don't you go ahead and do your intro and run that video. So one thing we want to point out is we'll be showing this video and one other video, but please note that these videos do have music attached to them. Um, we will be having closed captioning on it, so you still will be able to see or read what is being said. I am divine. Greater service, greater progress. I am Sigma Gamma Rho. Culture for service, service for humanity. I am Phi Beta Sigma. By culture and by merit. I am Alpha Kappa Alpha. First of all, servants of all, we shall transcend all. I am Alpha Phi Alpha. Community conscious, action oriented. I am Zeta Phi Beta. Achievement in every for the human endeavor. I am Cap Alpha Psi. Intelligence is the torch of wisdom. I am Delta Sigma Theta. Friendship is essential to the soul. I am Omega Psi Phi. I am divine. 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 Divine, the history, legacy, and celebration of African American Greek lettered organizations. Thank you, Renee. So now I am going to ask Olivia. She is going to give us the information you students need on cultural credit. Hi, everybody. Good evening. So tonight to receive cultural credit at the end of the program, I'll be putting a survey into the chat box um, just to get your feedback and some ideas for future programming. We really appreciate um, everything that you provide. So please take your time with it. Um, and a couple other things, if um, you have any tech issues or need help with anything, uh, go ahead and put it in the chat box. We'll be monitoring that or raise your hand if you have a question. Um, so that'll be a couple different ways to um, communicate with the panelists. So thank you. Thank you, Olivia. So now we are going to do the introductions of our panel participants for this evening. Um, first up, uh, Christopher Gator, who, yes, is my husband, who I wrangled into this. <laughs> Christopher, if you could, um, he is not a Stetson alum, but he is Greek, so I asked him to provide his perspective. 
Christopher, if you could just introduce yourself, um, your organization, and what you do professionally. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, well, my name is Christopher Gator, and I'm representing um, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, I am currently um, a registered nurse. I work with uh, the Halifax uh, Health System over in Daytona Beach, um, the Psychiatric Emergency Department. Um, so I, I deal with Baker Axe, basically, and I'm um, currently working on uh, my psychiatric nurse practitioner uh, degree. Um, and as far as Kappa Alpha Psi, uh, we were uh, amongst the first uh, all black Greek letter fraternities. We were founded on the campus of Indiana University at Bloomington on January 5th, um, 1911 by Elder Watson Diggs. <laughs> Thank and uh, actually, um, actually, it was stated in the video, but our uh, philosophy centers around uh, achievement in every field of human endeavor. Thank you, Christopher. Joanna, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, y'all. My name is Joanna White. I graduated from Stetson in 2019. I'm a member of, <laughs> I am a member of Sumi Gamarel Sorority Incorporated. Sumi Gamarel was founded November 12th, 1922 at Butler University in Indiana, Indianapolis. And I feel like something important to mention about Sumi Gamarel is the fact that it was founded in Indiana in 1922. <laughs> so, so something that a lot of people don't know is that 1920s was when the rise of the Ku Klux Klan happened. And so not only was Simi Gamero founded at a predominantly white institution that's similar to Stetson, but our organization was literally located across the street from the Grand Wizard of the KKK. Hmm. So seven strong African-American females who were educators decided to push past all of this in order to create this organization that we now see today. Our motto is greater service, greater progress. Because of our upbringing, we realized that you cannot progress unless you put your body into it and unless you put your service into it. So that's a little snippet about Simi Gamero. Thank you. I, I did not know that. That is very interesting. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, Patricia. Hi, everyone. My name is Patricia Medina. I am also from Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. I, <laughs> okay, so I love seeing my sister here tonight, and I'm so glad to see so many people here. Uh, she gave you a, a brief uh, overview about our history, and I think it's really important that this sorority is on Stetson in particular because of its founding on a PWI, a predominantly white institution in Indiana. And especially during the year that Joanna and I were at Stetson, I'm class of 2017. So we were on Stetson's campus during 2016 and uh, so glad to be part of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. All right, all right. And last but not least, uh, Alethea. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alethea Bonello, and I'm a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, founded in 1908 <laughs> on the campus of Howard University in Washington, DC. And as we know that one of our most high profile members is our Vice President Kamala Harris. It is certainly an honor to be a part of this sorority who believes in as many of the Divine Nine organizations in service. And we certainly carry ourselves in a way that is not only befitting of our sorority sisters, those who were initiated with us, who we call our line sisters, but also those who came before us and those who we pave a way 
to be able to aspire to be just like so many of us. We certainly endow and endeavor in ways of achievement, both scholarly as well as achieving in life. Many members of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority are school teachers, principals, leaders in education, and of course in politics and really all walks of life. But there are several of us that are educators. Currently, uh, well, actually I am a proud member of the class of 1998, graduating from Stetson University. And currently I am the operations manager for a healing paradigm, which is a psychological practice, psychology practice, as well as the program director for the Center, African American Center for Global Politics and Human Rights based here in Atlanta. Thank you. And I apologize. We do have one more panel participant, Justin. Hello, everybody. I am so honored to be here tonight. Uh, my name is Justin Roberson, and I'm a current junior at Stetson University and a proud member of the Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. I, uh, fun fact about me, I am one of the original seven charter members to establish the Gamma Rosetta chapter here at Stetson University. And I see a lot of my, uh, a lot of my line brothers and um, other my chapter members here as well. And I thank you all for being here to support, you know, to support our cause and whatnot. A little bit about our organization. We were founded January 9th, 1914 on the campus of Howard University by our three honorable founders. And our motto is stated as culture for service and service for humanity. Our organization is an organization that prides itself on A, inclusivity, and also B, giving back to the greater community. We believe that in order to get the best out of ourselves, we need to be able to feel the greater community. We need to be able to give back to those who have given so much to us. And I'm a proud member of this fraternity. Thank you so much. Thank you to each one of our panel participants. And thank you, Justin. I'm sorry. I didn't forget you, but I forgot you. My bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. So as I, um, we kind of stated a little bit, we do have um, some giveaways. Uh, fraternity and sorority involvement has donated five long sleeve tie dye shirts. So I am going to ask the question. And we'll see the first two people, I think, to answer it in the chat box will receive a shirt. So the question is, what is the name of the collective group of African-American fraternities and sororities? <laughs> and Renee will be handling the giveaways. <laughs> So actually in the chat, that is not the answer we're looking for. While Divine Nine is an answer, that is not the answer we're looking for. Oh, I see you <laughs> fall in there now. No, oh, it. Uh oh, I saw it. I saw it. I did too. Okay. <laughs> I did see it. All right. So I was like, people are uh, awesome. Awesome. All right, thank you so much, guys. And there are two more questions, so there are two more opportunities to win a shirt. So we're gonna jump right into our discussion this evening, and I'm gonna pose uh, four, maybe five questions to the group uh, of our panelists. Um, I'm asking the panelists to about a minute or two for their responses. Um, once we wrap up, then we will move on to the next question, okay? So our first question, well, you guys kind of already gave a brief history and the mission of your organizations. And again, thank you. It was much history there and a lot of information I did not even know. So how would you describe your organization's experience at Stetson? And I'll start with Patricia. <laughs> I had really great moments and I had some really tough moments. Um, one of the great things was that uh, the person in charge of sorority and fraternity engagement um, was Ryan Manning. And he was really instrumental in helping us to do a few, quite a few things. 
The first being was he helped us to get land on Stetson. Um, I hope it's still there. <laughs> I know we have a beautiful sign there that was donated yeah. by Joanna White's father or parents. Uh -huh. um, but he, along with Lua, helped us to find a space on Stetson's campus that we could call our own. And it was really, thanks. <laughs> It's, it's, it was really important for us to have that on Stetson to be acknowledged. And originally we had just asked for a tree and they actually gave us land. So that was really, really wonderful. <laughs> um, the other thing was Ryan provided a way for our sorority to be included in a conference that happened every spring and he found a way to provide a scholarship for two of our members to attend that conference uh, every year, which I thought was phenomenal. Um, we really appreciated it because we were able to go out and, and, and represent Stetson, which I thought was wonderful. Um, having uh, worked with other sororities was really nice. Um, and we had a deal with some things, but <laughs> I don't want to take up too much time. <laughs> okay, it's all right. But it was election year and, and it was a tough year. <laughs> um, people said some things and did some things and, and they were just showing themselves. And it made it really, really difficult to be on campus at times. So that's the good and the bad. Thank you. Joanna, you want to weigh in? Well, she doesn't want to talk about it, but I will. <laughs> so this happened around the time that I actually came into the organization. So I was on the Stetson University mock trial team, and I wasn't able to get go to an event that Simba Gamma Rho was having because I had to go to a competition. So it wasn't that long after the election that the KKK, like hoods and all, actually walked onto Stetson's campus. Hmm. And they were supposed to actually hold an event, but they, but somebody saw them, they alerted PSAFE, and so they ended up canceling the event. So that's actually kind of one of the reasons why I mentioned the history of Simi Gamero and their fight with the KKK as well because it's one of the things that actually pushed me further to go into the organization. Because if you look at these women that came before me, they were ordinary women like I was. And so the fact that they were able to push through, it actually gave me the courage to go ahead and push through as well. So I saw the strength in the organization and that was one of the things that made Simi Gamero more attractive to me. Also, I've, I know he's on the call, oh, I see him in my corner. So it was the first time that I ever did anything like try to be a fraternity sweetheart or anything. And so I remember Colin was the one who was hosting the organization. Yes, I see you <laughs> waving, hi. <laughs> and so that year I had actually tried to reach out to the fraternities and sororities at Stetson's campus because they thought that at the time Phi Beta Sigma had come on the campus, they mm -hmm. thought that our two organizations were isolating ourselves. When in reality, we just been reaching out, but this is like the bad part where it kind of felt like we were getting shunned. Because I remember one year that we were actually, I was actually talking to a different fraternity, just like, why didn't you reach out to Cindy Gamero? And then he looked at me and he was just like, be honest, if we would have reached out to you, would you even say yes? I said, yeah, of course. And then that's around that time, that's when Colin actually reached out, just like, hey, you want to do this? And so then just like, yeah, sure. And so that was the one time, well, one of the few times that we actually felt included within the Stetson community. And so I know that even though we're not on the ORC campus right now, I know that's something that may still be a struggle. So that's like also it's been really good. It's been really fun. We did a whole bunch of stuff. It's yeah. been rap. It's been amazing. But 
we also need to acknowledge acknowledge the history because if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. So I took Alethea. too much time. I'm it's done. okay. <laughs> Alethea, do you want to weigh in? Wow, it's amazing that it's bringing up memories. So of course I went, attended Stetson in the mid to late 1990s. A lot of things happened. Uh, my first year there is when the uh, OJ Simpson trial was taking place. And so there was a lot of tension around that um, between white students, some white faculty and um, staff um, and the black students on campus. Also, uh, I think also the Million Man March was, um, mm -hmm. took place uh, around that time as well. So it was really interesting. At the time, there were no uh, mm -hmm. members of the Divine Nine on our campus. We were an interest uh, chapter, if you will, interest colony is what they called it. And so interacting with the white fraternities and sororities and the members of Alpha Kappa Alpha um, brought about a lot of learning opportunities. One in particular, I don't know if you guys still have Airwave and Greek Fest. Um, you have the sing-alongs and things like that. Um, prior to us participating, it was really fun and games. It was real cute and everything. And then we introduced, of course, stepping, strolling, and choreographing actual dances and routines for the competitions. And that stepped up the level um, for everyone else. So. Um, I can't even recall which organization did it, but somebody wanted to do a unity um, routine. And so they decided to purchase the sorority and fraternity shirts and different members of their sorority wore different Divine Nine t-shirts. Uh -huh. And for those of you who don't know, that's taboo. That's a big <laughs> number because only the members of the respective organizations should wear the t-shirts. That's just a sign of respect. Mm -hmm. um, they went through an initiation process that allowed them to say that they are members of this particular group. And so they wear their shirts with pride. And also uh, what we call paraphernalia. When you have paraphernalia on, you have to step up how you act and respond in certain situations. And we re revere because the paraphernalia itself <laughs> carries the letters that we so, um, so uh, we earned in our own respective ways. And so that was an educational opportunity, um, a teaching moment for them. Uh, in addition, it's interesting that Joanna talked about being, feeling isolated because we did. We were the only black fraternity or sorority on campus. And so I think it was sometimes difficult for the or other organizations to interact with us and understanding what we could and could not do because there were certain things that they could do that we could not. And so um, also I had the opportunity, we actually had a house. So in terms of the support of Stetson University, the staff, they really did want us to succeed. We had the house right there, I think it's Burt Fish Road, but at the end of Sorority Row, that, that corner house was our house. I, was, I served as sorority counselor for a year. And that was a really great opportunity for us to have a place for us to gather, not just for chapter meetings, but everything. And for the other, um, people of color on campus, that was a place to go. I fondly remember that we allowed people to be able to watch the Million Man March from our chapter room as well. Um, and we had a lot of different cultural activities at the house. It was a really great gathering space for people of color on the campus. So um, yeah, a lot of great memories, but you know, I, we had a program called Let's Talk About Race in 1997, still talking about it now as a reaction to some of the things that took place on campus. Wow. I'll stop there. No, <laughs> I, I am loving the honest, I, I just have to say, I, I'm loving this honest dialogue. I think it's what's missing a lot of times when we get together and we talk and we kind of gloss over the ugly, then go straight to what's really nice and awesome and great about Stetson, but we don't want to discuss what's really underneath it all. And that's, you do can't, you know, we can't heal if we just continue to just cover over scabs. So Justin, you are currently on campus. You wanna give us your experience? Yeah, I'd love to share and I'll be, you know, I know we're pressed with time, so I'll be brief. Um, my experience on Stetson's campus has been uh, kind of touch and go. And I've only been ac active in the organization for two and a half going on three years now. 
Um, as far as our involvement with Setson, we have had some uh, we've had some very great moments. I remember one of my the highlight of my the highlight of my Stetson experience, and I my, I'm talking about my entire Stetson experience was uh, my first semester freshman year when the uh, when the people in the organization, uh, my profiles as we call them, people that came before me, they held a yard show right in front of Samson Hall. And you know, you, all of you know where Samson Hall is in the, in the middle of the school, right beside the fountain. And I remember being there, uh, you know, just falling in love with not only the organization even more, but being able to feel like I had I had a safe place to go to. You know, I can honestly and truthfully say I have never seen so many so many people of color in one area at Stetson's campus at one time, and it was it was a really great feeling. You know, it was a really great feeling knowing that even though I am at a PWI, there's still people that look like me, share the same history as me, share the same background as me. So that gave me a, that gave me a, a very great sigh of relief. And I, that, like I mentioned, that's my favorite moment at Stetson. And I feel like it will be forever. As I've been in the organization longer, you know, I've started to take on leadership roles. I've started to see, you know, some of my chapter brothers move on and start their lives. Things have, things have become hard, you know, things have become hard. Um, We've we've seen some stuff um, where we've tried to have like these unity events and type these type of things, and uh, people people have just blatantly disrespected not only our organization but the NPAC as a whole. And uh, it honestly and truthfully speaking, seeing and hearing those comments and seeing them uh, seeing them so easily, seeing them roll, hearing them roll off the tongue so easily it made me feel like I don't want to be here anymore. And not only me as a whole, but my organization. Uh, I, I, you know, I was, it, it dang near brought me into tears, you know, the fact that even, you know, we've been here, my organization has been here for three years, you know, uh, Sigma Gamma Rho has been on campus even longer than we have, and we're still fighting to be recognized. You know, we're still fighting to be noticed. And that, that you know, that type of stuff, it hurts, you know, it hurts. Um, I'm I'm really hoping that you know we could we could kind of bridge the gap and kind of eliminate this whole you know NPAC versus IFC and Panhellenic and become one Greek unity you know one Greek council here at Stetson University. Um, Renee has been an ultimate help in help helping bridge that gap, but honestly and truthfully, it's going to take more than just you know a couple of people from Panhellenic, myself and Renee, and even some of the people from IFC. It has to be a conscious effort to change. And I've seen the effort from some people, but in other people, I have seen an effort going in the opposite direction. So that's just a little bit about our experience here. That's my personal experience. And talking with somebody from the Panhellenic Council uh, a couple of days ago, when I leave campus and return in five or six years, you know, my biggest, my, my hope is that we were able to kind of make some change we were able to kind of gain that recognition and gain acceptance. Well, Justin, I hope that is not five or six years before you come back. I hope you come back every year, whether it's homecoming or just to visit. Um, hopefully, I mean, one day we'll be able to go back on campus and not do virtual. But, you know, the, the, the main goal is to keep our people active. You know, we want to keep our alumni active on campus. We want to keep you guys coming back. That's how we give and take and, you know, offering our talents and offering our gifts, not just monetary back to the university is how I believe we start building and we start taking care of and we start being able to move forward. Um, but so you kind of touched on it a little bit and I think each one of you kind of did. What do you think what do you think Stetson can do to actually increase Greek life, African-American Greek life initiative and support these organizations? What is it going to take for us to be able to have two active divine nine organizations on campus at one time? Um, I was saddened to know that Sigma Gamma Rho. I was there when 
uh, Stigma Gamma Rho came on, it was like Dove or something. And, you know, it, that first class of Stigma uh, Gamma Rho girls that, and I literally just found this out a couple of weeks ago when I started planning this event that Stigma Gamma Rho was no longer there. So what is that then? What do we have to do? Who do, if we had a chance to talk to the administration, if we had a chance to talk to President Roki, what is it that we can say that we need that what support and encouragement with that we need from the university in order to keep divine nine organizations at step sure go ahead you're on the screen <laughs> justin what are your thoughts okay for me i feel like it's start it's all about uh recognition um i know that I know, you know, one of the biggest things I notice when I go on Stetson's campus, you know, walking around, even going around the perimeter of the campus are all of the, you know, frat, frat houses, sorority houses with big bold letters of each organization on the side of the building. And, you know, granted, it's not, it's not generally in our history to possess frat houses and things of that nature, but I believe it's important to give us that recognition, you know, and for us, I know we don't really have, for, for Phi Beta Sigma, we don't really have much recognition on campus as far as like a safe space. As Alethea uh, mentioned earlier, how they had back when she was in school, we've kind of been bestowed a, a uh, meeting place, so to speak. But even then, it's not our meeting space. It's more so it's, it's being leased, you know, it's in our name or whatnot, but people, other people still have access to it, faculty, staff, whatever. Um, I'll take that, I'll even include that to the, uh, the SG Row plot behind Samson Hall. You know, yes, they have a plot, they have a sacred space for them, but look at the location of it. How often do people go back there? You know, how often are people walking, by, how often are people walking back there? I believe there was a sign just put up not too long ago stating that, you know, it, uh, this, this is a sacred place for SG Rows only. And if you're not an SG Row, please stay off of it. Mm -hmm. Why did it take? You know, why did it take years for that even to be noticed? So I believe it's all about recognition. I believe it's all about um, if we want to make if we want to make efforts to try to push the inclusivity of the NPAC, we need to give the NPAC more recognition and more noticeable recognition, not just checking off a box and saying, oh, we did it. You know, it's all about putting ourselves out there for everybody to see. Alethea, do you have any thoughts on it? That's a difficult one, I think, for me, since I'm not on the campus as much. Um, shortly after I graduated, we also had a, a group that were initiated into Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. So one of the biggest things is, first of all, we've already stated that there are nine different unique African-American Greek lettered organizations. And when you have a small population of people of color or anyone, because that's another lesson that mm -hmm. any person can join these, although they are historically African-American Greek lettered organizations, we, many of us can attest that we have had members of other races, other, um, uh, so, you know, very famous ones as a matter of fact. So, um, however, with the small population of minority students on Stetson's campus, and then to, it's difficult to say, hey, let's offer this particular African-American sorority and this fraternity, it may not be the one that someone aspires to. Another thing ab about um, persons who become members of uh, the NPHC, many of them have seen established members in their community that they're coming from. And so they aspire to be a particular sorority or fraternity. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, Again, it's difficult then to say, wow, we want to maintain this, but, and then there are people who don't want to join a Greek organization at all, and, and that's fine, that's their prerogative. So being able to be all things to all people is really very difficult at some place like Stetson University, um, but when it exists, we do want the support and that's important. And so um, another thing is I think these types of opportunities in which to educate the community. Because oftentimes, if you don't understand a thing, you ignore it, right? Or you may disparage it because you just 
you're just ignorant of what it is or what it does or who the people are. So if there's a possibility for Greek life to somehow encourage when they do have, um, I think it's called Rush Week, that there is a discussion about the divine line within that Rush opportunity um, to orient these members who are coming into these organizations about the place and the history of the National um, Analytic Council. Um, also, in addition, we, the NPHC typically has a relationship, the undergraduates with the graduate chapters that are in the respective communities. Um, I'm not sure if that happens with the PHC, but that's an important connection for us as well. But if you're coming from a different city to attend such university, you may not have that connection with the community. So the continuity cannot exist within the student population because they cycle every four years. So it really has to be the support systems that surround the students, i.e. Greek life staff, staff at Stetson, and then even the community at large that can help to encourage the students to continue to join these organizations and then sustain and maintain it. Excellent. Sorry, I'm muted. Oh, why did I do that? Um, Joanne or Patricia, one of you um, want to weigh in um, just for time's sake? So I remember when I was on campus, there seemed to be a thought that, well, we have a divine nine sorority. Now we need a divine nine fraternity. And then we're going to start looking at the multicultural fraternity or sorority. It was never, let's bring in all the divine nine or let's bring in anybody who wants to come in. It was more like, we did one, now let's do the other and everybody's gonna, you know, it was just, I knew people who wanted to join AKA, mm -hmm. but because Stetson at the time wanted it to be one divine nine sorority and one divine nine fraternity, we only brought one on. And, and, and it was sad because I knew that there were women who wanted to join AKA, so wanting to do it, being willing to do it and putting money into it is what Stetson needs to do. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna kind of lighten it a little bit with a question. <laughs> um, so here's your next quiz question. Sandra, before you move on, oh, I think yes, also, I'm gonna bring that back on. Um, I will commit, I do have uh, colleagues, friends who are part of the uh, NPHC nationally. Mm -hmm. um, it also has to be a consideration for PWIs. Yes. Um, it's very easy for HBCUs to be able to increase the membership, mm -hmm. you know, spring or fall year after year. But is there a way that the initiation could be changed um, for PWIs working with an HBCU or a neighboring school mm -hmm. that, as Patricia said, that person can go ahead and be able to join in that way but still be active on their respective campus. That is just out the box. That is just coming it's out. Actually, I've never heard, you know, but. No, actually that's how it used to be. Um, when I came to Stetson and I'm gonna just jump in real, real fast. Um, I also felt like Justin, I did a semester and I wanted to go. I didn't feel at all welcome. I didn't feel any support. And I was coming in as a non-traditional student. I was like 30 some years old. Uh, <laughs> I had some kids, I had a husband. Um, so I felt that as well. It was actually Lua Hancock who convinced me to stay. She literally was like, get involved, find some passionate thing. And I did that um, again my husband, who is going to answer a question eventually, <laughs> he is Greek. Um, when we first came to Stetson, the, it, the map still said that there was an AKA house. That house ain't been there. <laughs> so he was very excited because he just knew I was about to be an AKA. We did at that time, though, have an agreement with Bethune Cookman. So if a student at Stetson wanted to become wanted to join a divine nine you could apply through uh bethune cookman that is currently not the case right now there are some things that are happening that i've uh, talked to uh renee and benicia about so once bethune cookman kind of gets their thing back together then they can open that back that up as an option for uh stetson students but i also agree that 
you know, when you don't have a population of students that are wanting to join in, that's when you have that breakdown as well. But if there's not that opportunity or enough education about them, because honestly, I was never educated about Greek life until I met my husband. Um, it wasn't something that was within my family. So it's a lot to work with there. And I think that's where we kind of land at. But I'm going to throw out a question because we got to do this real quick, though. <laughs> so and Patricia and Joanna, y'all didn't say anything, but we're going to see who's smart. What is the animal associated with Sigma Gamma Rho? Poodle. No, oh, don't get an answer. <laughs> Troy had it first. <laughs> but you said, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. There it is. There it is. And for time's sake, because we're getting there, um, I did have one more question. I, I think we've kind of really covered a lot about, um, you know, what Stetson's kind of social justice climate is, what, what the campus climate has been in the past and what it currently is right now as far as our Divine Nine Greek organizations are concerned. And, you know, I don't want to keep pushing that. But what I would like to know is, what are your organizations doing nationally, because all of you are in different places, um, as we go, as our nation goes through all of this social justice, really heightened climate, what are your community, what are your organizations doing in their communities to kind of help heal and move us forward? Because that's one of the models, that's one of the things that's always attracted me um, to Greek life, even though I was never involved, was that there always seemed to be something happening. When I met my husband, uh, they actually had like a teen, uh, a young men's kind of organization. My sons went to learn how to tie their ties and, you know, just become proper men. But as we are in this space right now where so much has happened over the year, you know, I know that's something that we also have to grasp with, not just at Stetson, but nationally. So if you can just kind of briefly tell us what your organizations may be doing, that'd be great. Well, I just wanted to chime in real quick. What Sonia is referring to is uh, our Kappa League program, because, um, you know, with uh, traditionally African-American Greek letter organizations, um, we tend to stay active in that alumni space and kind of reach back uh, for the purpose of mentorship and grooming young men to be productive members of society. And uh, we also have the Guide Right program for you know, scholarships and uh, educational advancement and those sorts of things. So just, just kind of throwing that out there. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so is uh, Kappa Alpha Psi doing anything community-wise? Are we doing any, you know, anything? And if you don't know, or is this not something? You're on mute. Christopher, yeah. you're on mute. Okay. With our whole pandemic situation and the social distancing, uh, you know, with the just our inability to be able to be in the same close proximity, um, we're kind of not as active as we normally would be this time of year. So, and then, you know, I've been a little disconnected from the chapter with my school work and everything like that but. no worries no worries that's okay we'll all get back to normal <laughs> and start doing some pretty amazing things sooner before or later justin on campus are we doing anything amazing are there any events happening um or upcoming that we should know about so you know every year we have our annual uh, March of Dimes fundraiser, and it'll be so. What March of Dimes is, we're collecting money to uh, we're collecting money to give back to the American Cancer Society and American Red Cross in an effort to uh, help babies 
with uh, born with birth defects is what that is. Now we do that annually around this time of year, and it's been a little delayed because because of the entire global pandemic and whatnot. Earlier this year, however, we did once we got back on campus, we had a uh, pretty much a national mandate and whatnot, where the state directors from every or the directors from every state were given given an abundance of masks, and we were encouraged to pass those masks out. So around, I want to say around September, when we first started to arrive back on campus, we had, our chapter had an event where we sat outside the uh, Carlton Union building and passed out masks to, uh, passed out masks and gave out little bottles of hand sanitizer to everyone that walked by. Um, and, you know, we just wanted to encourage them to A, actually wear the mask, but also B, protect themselves, protect their families, friends and whatnot, and actually practice these safe uh, protocols provided by the CDC. Our alumni chapter has also held, or our alumni chapter is also assisting when it comes to facilitating, um, when it comes to facilitating these PPE distributions and whatnot. And also, our we we have been encouraged, you know, to kind of look. We've been encouraged to uh, kind of take that next step and get others involved in looking towards a vaccination and help to try to fight this off. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm definitely going to start following you guys and, and I encourage everybody to make sure that um, you follow the Instagram page. I, you guys have an Instagram page, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would encourage yeah, you and whatever social media forms to follow so we can keep up with the events and continue to help support Phi Beta Sigma fraternity at Stetson. I have one more question, then we're gonna show a short video um, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. So last quiz question, what is Kappa Alpha Psi, Phi, I'm sorry, what is Kappa Alpha Psi's motto? My husband actually said it in his intro. I think Ryan got it first. Ryan, Caleb, Jasmine, Chris. My God, you guys are really on it and I love it. I love it. So we are going, while you guys are doing that, we are going to show a quick video, Renee. And again, this video does have music in it, um, but I will be having the closed caption on so you are still able to watch it. And this video is going to talk about the history of stepping and strolling. Stepping, strolling, or party walking, one thing's for sure, it's exciting to be a part of. One of the most interesting and insightful subgenres of stepping is strolling, also known as party walking. Jacqueline Malone defines party walking as organized line movement performed around the floor at a party. Other sources define strolling as a cultural dance often performed in unison and in a circle to symbolize unity and strength. Like stepping, strolling has historical ties to both African and American art forms. Strolling's African roots can be traced back to South African and Ghanaian dance forms. One particular dance, the ring shout, is a religious dance produced by African slaves where participants shuffle single file and counterclockwise to music. According to Sterling Stuckey, professor of history at Northwestern University, the ring shout is a sacred ritual in which worshippers shift their feet and move their bodies in a circle to symbolize the connection between the past, the present, and the future. Strolling's American roots begin with Black Greek letter organizations in the mid-20th century when a ritual ceremony called the Death March became popular on historically Black college and university campuses. Dr. Walter Kimbrough defines death marches as the final activity of the BGLO pledge process. Pledges would spend hours marching around campus, reciting poems, and singing organizational hymns. 
the history of strolling can also be traced back to the black church. It was here that hand clapping, foot stomping, singing and dancing became mainstays in black religious culture. Additional connections include black military GIs and classic soul music acts like The Temptations, The Supremes, and The Jackson Five. Today, strolling is a staple on college campuses across the country. Fraternities and sororities hold stroll exhibitions, some with cash prizes and scholarships. Since the mid-1980s, many fraternities and sororities in the National Association of Latino Fraternal Organizations, also known as NALFO, have adopted strolling as their art form of choice. Out of respect for Black Greek letter organizations, some do not step, but rather participate in strolling as an alternative. From death marches to dance halls, strolling is now performed in some way, shape, or form by Greeks of all councils. However, there is one rule that you must remember. Never, under any circumstances, break the line or interrupt a fraternity or a sorority stroll. The dominant principle here is respect for the organization. As time moves forward, we will all witness strolling becoming more popular amongst Greeks of all councils. However, it is up to all of us to pass down the history, traditions, and customs from generation to generation. I just want to say, I think one of the main things that was said in there was about respect. Maybe it's not about just crossing a stroll line, a step line, but it's just about respect. And when we respect each other, we can respect these organizations, whether they're on campus or not. And we respect the people that are around us and we give them support and we give them encouragement. And that's really what we need from the entire Stetson community, not just for the Divine Nine programs, but for all of our initiatives that we have at Stetson. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> so now I'm gonna open it up for question and, questions and, um, and answers. But first we had one question come in before the event. Um, and this is for our panel participants. And I think we've kind of touched on it already a little bit, but if you have any more thoughts um, I encourage you to jump right in. Um, how can we, as members of Greek life community, support and become better allies for our brothers and sisters in Divine Nine Greek organizations? And that is from Cullen. Thank you, Cullen. I just wanted to say, I think it's important, as Joanna mentioned earlier, it is so simple to just reach out. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of, I you know, remember <laughs> the summer prior to the start of a school year, we would have retreats, we would have committee meetings, and we would plan out the schedule. And so at the beginning, since we're all trying to get to know each other and learn about the new leadership, being able to have an opportunity, whether it's a mixer, whether you say, hey, let's have a games night, you know, sororities versus fraternities, or but when you're doing it, just be intentional to be inclusive. And so not just NPHC, but all the Greek lettered persons should be invited. Um, right. Because I was a sorority counselor, I had to meet with all the NPHC members, um, all the respective sorority counselors. And I'm really grateful for how my uh, staff member, Daryl Stubbs, along with Mickey Parker, were very intentional about how we were able to go out and to do out of the box things, um, to be in spaces that we typically weren't. And we would have to, uh, we would have our meetings at each other's uh, sorority uh, respective houses and we'd have to cook. So he would partner our fraternity counselor and a sorority counselor and we would have to go ahead and cook dinner for the rest of the counselors when we had our staff meeting. And that was good because oftentimes I would never see a lot of these people in my day-to-day -day routine. Whether it, I didn't see them in class, I didn't hang out with them, but because of that experience that year, I got to know them on a different level. So we have to take what are just simple communal things that we do on an everyday basis and be intentional about including others to be a part in that, just to widen the circle. I don't think anybody else can say it better. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any other thoughts? Thank you, Cullen.
Any other questions for our panel participants? There is a question in the chat from Emma, where it says she's wondering if anyone from Sigma Gamma Rho could explain more about the significance and meaning of the stage behind Samson. So the plot space. The stage. I can take this one. So something that's significant about that one particular spot of land is that's when we entered onto the Stetson campus. So this area is actually where our chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho was chartered. Mm -hmm. And so this stage, kind of like how she was saying about the AKA having their own house, this was actually our only safe space on campus. And it holds the significance, not only as the entrance into Stetson campus, but like the one place where we are there, where we could be ourselves. And also we have a spot on campus that's permanent. It says that we are not forgotten. We are here, even though that they may have put us in the back, we're still there and you can still see us there. So yeah. when, before we actually had the Simi Gamma Rose sign on there, we had many people stepping onto that land, which was entirely disrespectful. Now we have that sign and now we have the black sign. There is no excuse in order to be stepping on that land. Think of it as somebody walking into your sorority house or in your fraternity house and just completely trashing the place. Anybody that's not a member of the organization and anybody that does not have permission from that organization should not be in that space. And that's the same thing with that plot of land. Mm -hmm. So one thing that Colin was asking about is how do we support them? If you see somebody stepping on our land, if you see somebody rearranging our stones, which happened a lot, we had somebody change the breast cancer awareness sign that we had there into the shape of a male genital. If you see somebody on that land that's not supposed to be there, say something actually say hey this is a sacred spot you need to get off hey can't you read there's a sign you need to get off so like that's the importance of the land you don't want me coming in your dorm room messing up your stuff don't come into my house and mess up that so that's the significance of that spot and if i could just add on to that um biblically speaking and joshua talks about that when the israelites came to a particular place they wanted to mark it with stones. And so when people came upon it, they said, what mean ye these stones? And that allowed people who understood the story to tell the next generation the importance and the significance of the stone. And so in a larger context, so it is not only at Stetson, this is a replica of what happens at most historically black colleges and universities, that sororities and fraternities are given their own tree, plot of land, or even a bench that, as Joanna said, is sacred ground, that only those members of that particular organization are really allowed to be there as that creates a safe space and that sacred place that they are proud of, that they have a location to say, what is this yellow and blue? What is this red and white? What is this pink and green on this tree? What does it mean? It is so significant that when I had a chance to go to Howard University, I wanted to find the tree with the symbol of Alpha Kappa Alpha and take a picture to record that I went to Alpha Chapter, that mm -hmm. I was able to stand on that holy ground. So you may not have understood that, but when you hear the story and the significance, it makes you think and then reshape how you see it for yourself. So of course, if someone sees a tree, if someone sees stones, they don't understand the significance, then they can't have the reverence mm -hmm. that it brings. And so that's just, again, a part of the education that needs to take place. Awesome. I think there is another question in here. Renee, there's another one. There's questions in here about housing and what that looks like. <laughs> and while I know some of our panelists might not be able to answer that, I'm going to chime in real quick. Um, so know that we are working with our organizations to see what those housing options do look like. Um, so know that 
it's not necessarily off the table, but we do have to see what is available and what this looks like. Um, but also know that there is a veterinarian sorority involvement advisory board, and we are looking at the future of housing for all of our fraternities and sororities, not just IFC and Panhellenic, and what that realistically looks like for our whole community. So our NPHC, other, if potentially other multicultural organizations join our campus, they are also being a part of that conversation as well. And there's going to be more information to come on that too, because we definitely want our alum and our students um, to be a part of that conversation as we move forward. That's awesome. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. And just so you know, Alethea, I went on this whole tangent about putting a plaque up for AKA because I was really hurt that that house wasn't there. Like we drove around looking for that house. I was like, where is it? But I understand that that's not an option right now, but we're going to do something. We're going to do something. And just so there's some context for everybody that's in here, there have there are nine African-American Greek life organizations. There have only been four different organizations at Stetson's campus. Today, there is only one. Sigma Gamma Rho, I think you were on campus, what, five years? five years yes. that they were able to survive on Stetson's campus. And it makes no sense, in my opinion, that that organization could not flourish. I understand the overlying issues and um, involvement of students and interest, but we have to do more educating. We have to push out. We have to be just as inclusive for the divine nine organizations as we are for all the sororities and fraternities on Stetson's campus. Is the AK house where the wellness house is currently? Uh, Renee says, yes, Cullen, that is where it was. <laughs> I don't know somebody. Why weren't these conversations? Um, Jean, um, I see your question um, about why weren't these conversations happening beforehand, considering the fact that we've had multiple divine nine fraternities and sororities. Again, um, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, all I can tell you is that you know we're having it now. And we will continue to have these conversations. Uh, again, I love the honesty that has come out of it. And I don't think we should stop these conversations now. I think this is something that we will revisit again as an event in the near future. And Sanja, if I could say, I know that to Stetson's credit, a um, couple of years back, probably perhaps prior to the uh, um, chartering of the Phi Beta Sigmas or around that time, I know that the Orlando Panhellenic, National Panhellenic came up mm -hmm. and had conversations as to why there wasn't a uh, divine nine presence on the campus of Stetson and what could be done about it. Um, mm -hmm. So these have been ongoing conversations. I just celebrated my silver. I'm a, considered a silver SAR, which means yeah. that I've been a member for 25 years now. So it's 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 been a lot of iterations um, yeah. that have been going on in cycles at Stetson. Thank you so much, and congratulations. <laughs> I was going to say I think there have been conversations. I just don't think people have been listening, mm. and that's been the biggest problem. Mm. I remember one time I went to one of the multicultural events, and I was talking about how someone said that if you want to hear about black and brown people, then you need to take an ethnic studies course. And I brought that up on the panel and someone said to me, well, that's kind of understandable, you know? And I said, well, here's another thing. There weren't any books about women either that we were talking about. Hmm. And someone said, well, you should take a gender studies course. Now, the woman who said that was understandable about race jumped on immediately and said, well, I don't understand that. I mean, genders, that's important. We need to talk about both genders. And I was like, wow, that's kind of ironic because, you know, when I said it five minutes ago about race, you were just saying, oh, take an ethnic studies course. That's understandable. So the conversations are happening. People are being shut down when they say things. And 
I think we really need to actually listen and take action because Sonia is the only reason why I came for this panel today because I did not have great memories of Stetson. Ooh, I want to hop on this too. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just saying that because during my senior year, so 2018 to 2019, we actually had a joint event with Phi Beta Sigma. And so we were talking about the divine nine. So we had a strolling section, we had a history section, we had a stepping section, we had food, mm -hmm. we had our alumni come out, we had all this other stuff. And basically only our friends showed up, only other African-American students showed up. And it was actually, we even had culture credit for this. And we barely even had anybody for Panhellenic and maybe like three people from IFC that actually come. Hmm. So I think this goes back to like my original point. We reach out, we're stretching out our hands. Don't reject it. Yeah. Like that's the whole purpose of this. We have, you got to meet us halfway. We can't go all the way with this. And hopefully this conversation opens that up and people get a better understanding. I'm hoping that it has been informative. I know I've learned a few things that I didn't know um, that we do open up those conversations that people continue to, you know, stretch hands and someone will, you know, stretch back and, you know, we'll be able to start healing things that have been definitely broken for a very long time. Um, but we have to do the work and the work begins with the education. And this is the first of many of those discussions and events to start educating, you know, our campus, our alumni, myself, and our faculty and staff as well. You know, it's, it's a universal thing for us to be able to learn from one another. And we have to be willing to understand the other perspectives as well. I don't think there are any more questions. Well, before we wrap up, oh, I just hello. wanted I have to one, if that's okay. just kind of reiterate. Wait, hold on, Chris. Hold on for a second. I have a student oh, question come in. Sorry. No worries. Oh, hi, I'm Michaela Moreland. I just wanted to hop on real quick. So at my high school, we actually had a um, step team and we had a Delta Theta Sigma Delta Gems chapter that I was a part of, which I know is <laughs> very surprising whenever I tell people that. Oh. But the... Um, woman who started these organizations on our campus she started with the step team to kind of get people interested in the culture and the historic significance do you think maybe starting with a step team or something like that could lead to more interest in the divine nine I need somebody <laughs> what are you guys thoughts Patricia I was going to say um Divine Nines are about service first. First, so I, um, I don't know. For me, it service first <laughs> is more important than stepping to get people interested. So that's just that's just me. Alethea, I think, I think for me, the reason why we see so many high school step teams is because they're not members of the sorority or fraternity. So when you take it to a collegiate level, that's a little bit different. Yeah, it's okay. a little bit different. So um, again, I think um, as Patricia said, not only service, but again, the education has to be there. And um, a real conversation needs to be had with the, you know, the uh, Panhellenic Council first um, because you elect presidents, you elect all these officers. And so it starts from the head. And there needs to be some agreements and commitments from those officers first, yes. that they will take the lead and they will be intentional. We're not saying that, you know, we're not asking anyone to force anyone to do anything. We are intentionally encouraging people to step out of your comfort zone because not yeah. only is it important, when you're on a college campus, you don't only learn in the classrooms. Much of the education should be outside the classrooms. And part of the education is the cultural competency, is the cultural exchange, because you will not have the opportunity to be a part and to interact with so many different people than you will on a college campus. And some way we have to really instill that in our young people, utilize this campus and this classroom 
to be able to not only change how you think, but how you feel and how you choose to treat other individuals. And that happens outside the classroom when you break bread and when you exchange ideas and thoughts. So true. Um, I got you. <laughs> Anything? I'm kind of gonna wanna. Um, hey, I I get it. Ooh, Christopher. Been, oh, Chris. I'm sorry. Chris. I don't know what's happening. Oh, no, I'm 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 good. I think Alethea pretty much summed it up pretty well. So yeah, she did. Kind of kind of took the words from me. So <laughs> thank you. So there's been a lot of conversation in the chat room. Um, it's been amazing. I love the energy that's in there. Um, people are really, you know exchanging ideas and wanting to learn more. And I will make this commitment right now that this is not the last of any conversation or discussion we have um, around Divine Nines or any other multicultural diversity and inclusion issues at Stetson University. Um, we have been honest tonight. We have been intentional about our feelings and we have very much so stated what needs to happen, the conversations that need to happen, the education that needs to happen. I love the break bread and, you know, and really analyze each other, but, and also the educating outside the classroom. I'm going to use that. <laughs> but this is where we start at. And only everybody here in this in this in this Zoom event right now can move us forward. And it's just about having those intentional conversations and being honest. And I'm gonna wrap this up with some thank yous. First of all, I wanna thank all my panel participants. Um, many of you don't know, but my family was kind of in the middle of a rough spot for about two weeks or so. Um, and you guys, you know, y'all just came through and I, I can't thank you enough for that. Um, Rena, just amazing. I came up with this idea and then Rena just ran. <laughs> so I have to thank her. She was so encouraging and so supporting. Uh, she just, anything I needed, she was there for. Renee, Benicia, who isn't able to be with us tonight, and her husband, who was also supposed to be on the panel, um, sending them thoughts and prayers. Renee, thank you so much, because Renee ran the videos, because I was like, uh, -uh. <laughs> but she was amazing. Olivia, um, in our alumni office, who called me like, you got it? We need to talk about anything? Literally a couple hours ago, I was like, I don't know. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it work. Um, and, and again, just to each and every one of you that decided to take an hour out of your day to jump in here and learn a little bit something that maybe you haven't known before. I hope it was educational. I hope it was informational for you. Um, I, I, I can't wait to put on the next event and I hope that each and every one of you will attend. Thank you, Sonia. Thanks Thank you. Time. There's Rena. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. It was a pleasure. Well, thank you, honey. And I'm, I'm honored <laughs> to have been able to participate. <laughs> Thank you. Take oh, care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Huge thank you to all our panelists. You've been wonderful. And also the other alumni board members who are on the call tonight. Oh, yes. And um, my uh, committee members, JJ and Scott Bohr, um, just so thankful. I kind of just was like, hey, we're doing this program. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, OK. <laughs> but the next event is going to be a collective effort. <laughs> Thank you so much, Scott. I love you. I love you, too, Sonia. And Chris, good to see you again also, even though from afar. Take care. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Patricia, I definitely wanna stay in touch with you. Alethea, um, I love the fact that we've, um, you know, kind of found each other. <laughs> and now I'm never letting you go. 
<laughs> and I promise it's not just for, you know, hey, jump on an event with me. I genuinely want to continue our conversations. I genuinely want to continue to love and support and encourage you in whatever you're doing. And I hope the same for me. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you. Have a good night. Hey, Justin, let us know if you need anything. Right.